hello friends so i'll give a very ultra brief review on this uh, drug sevalimer so i'm sure many of the intensivists must be using this drug in their icu especially for a chronic kidney disease so i just thought it's good that as part of drugs review we just review this drug all that's a very simple drug very small topic so of course it will follow with an mcq questions after this just for our uh, trainees to benefit uh, in answering these mcqs so we should acknowledge my colleague uh, dr sanjay who helped me develop this content so just we we'll look into the phosphate metabolism so the oral average phosphorus intake is around 772 to 2000 mg so this is just a ballpark sort of a figure and most of the phosphorus uh, is excreted in the feces around 465 to 620 mg gets excreted in the feces and uh, around uh, about equal quantity and little more than that gets excreted in the kidney so when phosphorus is taken it gets redistributed in the body into the extracellular fluid and the plasma and the bone so around 155 to 1500 mg gets distributed in the plasma and extracellular fluid and around 12000 mg or 1000 maximum amount goes into the bone but then it gets recirculated from the bone and from the plasma and the extracellular fluid around 3000 to 5250 mg enters the kidney and then get excreted in the urine and some of it gets recirculated from the kidney so this is so basically if you look at this pictorially so there is lot of recirculation of this phosphorus or redistribution of phosphorus that tends to happen after ingestion from the gut it goes into the plasma extracellular fluid and then to the bone and then it gets redistributed from the bone and vice versa to the kidney to, to which it gets excreted and then it gets resecreted from the kidneys back into plasma and into the extracellular so this is just a pictorial representation of how the phosphate redistribution of the body happens so just for the ease of remembering remember most of it is present in the bone and gets most of the recirculation happens through the plasma and the extracellular fluid compartment and bone and kidney plays an important uh, sort of a role in maintaining the balance so that's why phosphorus levels tend to go up enormously when there is a chronic kidney disease because predominantly it gets uh, excreted from the kidney and then it gets uh, secreted also in the kidney which gets recirculated into the extracellular fluid and the plasma so that's why phosphate level tends to go up in chronic kidney disease and phosphorus as i said uh, kidneys do secrete and does get excreted from the kidney so all this happens from the proximal convoluted tubules and there are various transporters for the phosphates uh, which facilitates its entry into the cell and out of the cell and these are different transporters that you would see so this is in brief just about how this whole absorption and redistribution of phosphorus happens in the body so sevalimer it's not a very uh, you know the mechanism of action is very very simple it's like a k bind it just binds to the phosphate and this binding happens in the gut so the sevalimer binds to the phosphate in the gut with ionic bonds and hydrogen bonds so those are the bonds through which sevalimer the protonic element of the sevalimer binds to the phosphate within the gut so there is no sort of a absorption that happens in the gut so it's mainly the binder it binds to the phosphate and reduces the phosphate and sevalimer gets excreted in the feces as i said and also some of it gets excreted from the urine as well so since it's only a binder sevalimer binds only to phosphate because it is a binder it does not bind to any other anions or cations so there are no changes in the bicarbonate or aluminum or calcium because it only specifically binds to the phosphate and it's available as 400 mg either as a tablet or as a powder so we tend to use more of tablets because of ease of usage and it is available as 800 mg so it's available as sevalimer hydrochloride or sevalimer carbonate and 400 and 800 mg are the doses that are available so when you look at the dose uh, if phosphate is more than 9 mg per dl then higher dosage is what has been prescribed so dosage is 1600 mg three times a day which is to be taken along with the meals so every uh this tablet sevalimer has to be taken always with the meal because it binds to the phosphate present in the meals and facilitates its reduction and does not uh, lead to the increase in the phosphate levels so if the phosphate is 7.5 to 9 the dosage suggested is 1200 mg three times a day 
and phosphate 5.5 to 7.5 is 800 mg three times a day and all this need to be taken along with the meals and uh, so the target uh, the maintenance of sebelimer dose is to maintain the target phosphorus of less than 5.5 mg so that should be one's target if if the range of phosphorus obviously ckd patients when they are sebelimer you one would be monitoring phosphate levels if it is in the 3.5 to 5.5 as a normal range, the suggestion is to maintain the current dose. So if it falls less than 3.5 milligram and one needs to reduce the sevelimal dose by 400 to 800 mg per meal, depending on what dose the patient is on. Basically, the dosage has to be calibrated and titrated to the phosphate levels that needs to be monitored when someone is on sevelimal. So average prescribed daily dose is around 7.2 grams per day. And in chronic kidney disease, where phosphate is a big problem, so some of the highest dose, tolerable dose that has been studied is up to 14 grams per day. So this is the sort of dosage of 7MR. So when you look at adverse effects, because it's a phosphate binder, binds to the phosphate within the gut, uh, so most of the disturbances are GI disturbances. So it can lead to nausea, vomiting, can have some abdominal pain, diarrhea. And melina also is reported. So they can have melina also with uh, several MR. So for intensives, maybe this is of some relevance because many of the CKD patients, they do come to ICU, they can have GI bleeds. So if they are on several MR, please bear in mind that can also perpetuate the GI bleeds or melina. You know, that is something. So drug interaction, it interacts with ciprofloxacin, mycophenolate. This is of interest, especially in post-transplant patients if they have CKD, Sevelimer has interaction with mycophenolate and it does interact with thyroxine and it does interact with anticonvulsants and antiarrhythmic drugs. So these are some of the drug interactions. So if you, how much ever you dig into the drug, so this is all there is about drugs. So now the question is, is there a good evidence uh, for substituting? Because when I was doing my medicine post-graduation, so we used to use LOFAS or calcium acetate is something that we were using or calcium carbonate to reduce the phosphorus and increase the calcium. So there is there are a lot of trials comparing whether the Sevelimer, which is relatively newer drug, at least for me, uh, in comparison with the calcium carbonate or acetate. So there was this big meta-analysis that came from China. So meta-analysis of the efficacy and safety of Sevelimer as hyperphosphatemia therapy. Because I'm sure most of my listeners would know, for all CKD patients nowadays, we are not using that drug, uh, calcium carbonate or calcium acetate, or low fast, what we used to use. Now, most of these patients are 7 MR. So, is that justified? So, that comes from this meta analysis. Uh, so, this, uh, this meta analysis compared 7 MR versus calcium carbonate, or, and it also compared versus lanthanum carbonate and placebo. It took all the studies which compared 7 MR with any of these traditionally were used, like calcium carbonate is something which I, we were using when I was doing my medicine and lanthanum carbonate and placebo. So they, they took around, this is the largest meta-analysis which got published in 2023. They took 34 randomized control trials with 2,802 patients comparing Sevelimer with other agents. And look at this, this is very interesting. They looked at all-cause mortality was significantly less when they when Sevelimer group compared to other calcium carbonate or lanthanum carbonate. And the calcification, the vessel calcification score also was significantly less in Sevelimer group. And Sevelimer group had less hypercalcemia because when you use calcium carbonate or lanthanum, so we, we have to monitor calcium and there can be risk of hypercalcemia. So there was less of hypercalcemia and there was less of hyperphosphatemia also. So it had a lot of good effects. And I think what is striking for us intensivists or for any other doctor is the mortality benefit that it had and the vessel calcification, which is so important in all the CKD patients, that was also significantly reduced. And they looked at gastrointestinal adverse events that was similar between Sevelimer and other agents. So that's about it. So, so in brief, this is all there is about this drug. Very simple drug, binds to phosphorus, predominantly causes GI effects. Dosage is simple, 800 to 1000, titrated to maintain the phosphorus between 3.5 to 5.5 and has to be taken with meals. And few drug interactions, which if you remember, that should be good enough. And there is a good sort of a clinical studies which substantiates its usage uh, in comparison to the other traditional drugs that you were using. So this is just the forest plot of all-cause mortality. As you see, the P was very significant. So it significantly favored 
the use of uh, several MR as opposed to calcium carbonate or lanthanum carbonate. So now we'll move to the MCQs. For So I have around five trainees sitting with me. So I'll just ask a few MCQs. Very simple. From So as you see, there's not much into this drug. So very simple MCQs. So what is the primary indication for the use of uh, several MR? So I'll ask Pragna. So what, what's the answer? Okay, she answers B. So hyperphosphatemia and chronic. So it's not a drug for hyperkalemia. It's not a drug for hypercalcemia. Not a drug for hypophosphatemia. So B is the right answer. So the second question is to Dr. Mega, who is sitting with me. Which of the following is a major advantage of 7MR over calcium-based phosphate binders? Lower serum potassium, increases intestinal calcium absorption, does not contribute to hypercalcemia, reduces serum albumin levels. C. So she says C. So C is the right answer. So she gets it right. So that's good. So the third MCQ goes to Dr. Pratibha, who is sitting here. So what is the primary mechanism of action of Sevelamer inhibits phosphate absorption, binds dietary phosphate in the GI tract, increases renal phosphate excretion, enhances calcium absorption. B. Okay, she gets the answer right, so it's the B. <laughs> so I think all my trainees are listening to this very attentively. So the next question. Okay, so this goes to my good friend, uh, Dr. Shastri, who presented this, who helped me develop this content. But this, he had not included this in his presentation, so I, I put this question to him. Sevelamer has additional non-phosphorus related benefits. Which of the following is one of them? Reduction in serum iron levels, reduction in LDL cholesterol, increases in potassium levels, increase in GI motility. Oh, he gets it right. So I think as you saw in the meta-analysis, the vessel calcification was significantly less. So reduction in LDL cholesterol is one of the additional non-phosphorus related benefit. So the last question, which of the following is a common side effects of 7MR to all of our trainees? Is it hypercalcemia, GI upset, electrolyte imbalance, or cardiac arrhythmias? So everyone gets it right. So it's a GI upset. So, so thank you, folks. So that's about it. So I request you all to submit your valuable work to the Journal of Acute Care and uh, visit my website, www.drpradeepangapur, to rehear to this lecture. So thank you, friends. Thank you, one and all.